Hi guys, welcome to Garden on a Hill where we talk about easy home gardening. Just when you think it's about time to bring out your seedlings, I'm bringing them back in because the frost is coming back here at Zone 7B. And I'm sure in some areas of the US you're gonna have this last minute freeze. These are some of the seeds that I bought, seedlings that I bought, and also seedlings that I grew from this indoor seed starter, which is going to be the topic for today. How did I make this semi or insulated seed starter that I have here? I'm gonna show you how I did this, but let me bring in all my seeds for now because 30s are coming again. If you are new to this page, make sure you hit subscribe so anytime I upload something new, you get notified. Anyway, let's go to this. You saw this on my last video actually, and a lot of people ask, what is this? This is my insulated seed starter. It's actually semi-insulated. It's not fully closed in the gaps but I don't really need it for that matter because it's actually kind of inside my house anyway. But just if you are curious why it's kind of insulated here, two things because one, I do keep this door open a lot, especially in the winter here in the south. I wanted to do something that works for my space. My space is small. I don't do that much seed starts in the winter like zone fives and above. I do start them here sometime around January, February. And then, you know, I pot them and bring them outside immediately as I can. So this is just a temporary holding station for me to for just to germinate the seeds. So this is a wall-mounted indoor seed starter. It can also be freestanding, just so you're aware, but I've made it in a wall mount in my space because I do have a wall and it just gives me more stability because I do tend to kind of blend it more in this room as a piece of furniture. Pieces. The top shelf is what I call this and when you open this portion, it kind of locks in and locks back so you can easily access your seeds. And this very top portion, you have all my seed trays. You have a thermometer in here that tells me right now it's about 85 in there. And then I also have these soil temperature thermometers, which tells me right now my soil is around 90, which is great because these are summer plants right here. Now this top shelf also has a heat mat so if you are not aware a heat mat is basically like a 10 by 20 mat i have two in here that heats the bottom of the tray into a constant temperature i believe it tells it here i think this is around 75 to 85 but sometimes it gets hotter here because again it's kind of semi-insulated but that helps the seeds to grow very quickly and germinate so this whole portion of the top row is that more heated portion to the side of it you'll actually see a small fan right here that keeps a you know a very mild blow in this chamber so mold doesn't grow in it because remember it's always a problem when you do these indoor seed starters i've done them in the past and mold starts to grow the fan does help and what I like th about this fan, it's, it's very small and it doesn't really affect, you know, the space of my indoor seed starter. I'm actually changing this to another fan. The reason why is because this is too gentle and it doesn't reach the very end when I start to harden my seedlings. Because when your seedlings grow in the indoor seed starter, they need some sort of air to make sure their twigs move to get stronger. This doesn't really reach very strongly to the far end and I already found a fan that I'm gonna install later to make sure that happens. So it's two things that the fan accomplishes, the mold and then also it gives the ability to make the seed stem stronger. And then of course I have my light here. We'll um, get to it in detail later. And this is a very good light. I'll give you the specs in a little bit. But what I like about the seed starter is the light is not in my face. So I'm not getting glared all the time. And anytime I pull something in and out, this holds it back. And then when I'm done, I just close it and it locks back in. I have this little lip that holds the cover. And then also these magnetic clips that hold all the pieces in place. So that is pretty much the upper portion of it and you're wondering what this silver thing is everywhere this is the insulated bubble wrap so it accomplishes two things it has like an r value that it's not really going to reach the r value because i have poked some holes through here 
but it has certain insulative value because it gives you that air gap in between the bubbles. And the best thing is it gives you a good reflectance of the light inside the chamber, especially when you close this. It's great because it, it's like intensifying the light inside there. Now looking at the bottom portion, this is, as you can see, I have seedlings here. It's about the same setup. Light fixture is the same. The fan is the same, which I'm also going to change. As you can see, it's starting to blow some of the seedlings left and right, but it's not too strong in here. Uh, but this chamber is where I put my seedlings in when they start to grow. And the good thing about it again is I can keep it open like this or leave it closed like that. It's really flexible. And then one thing that was great with this seed starter, is I can open both at the same time. And the light fixture, since it's so bright in here, when I close both doors, I don't have to adjust the light fixture. I mean, look at my peppers and eggplants. They do not even get leggy because typically this gets very leggy when you don't adjust the light. So some of the seed starters that you'll see, they'll pull down their light fixture all the way down about that height or that low to keep the seedlings from not being leggy. In this case, I don't even need to explain my tomatoes look really good. They're not very leggy. So that helps with the light inside. When I started this project, I wanted to limit the amount of tools that I need. So I immediately thought about the wire shelvings in the shelving section. I bought five 12 by 48 inch wire shelves, a 48 inch wire track. I bought two of these, a Reflectix roll tape that will cover as my insulative cover, zip ties that are four inches, about a hundred pieces to connect all things together, the reflective tape to make sure that the Reflectix roll is sealed together, and then a scissor. So this is how it looks as a close-up. We now have the two wire shelves that are the stands or the legs. This is the front face that I was talking about. This is going to be the front where I'm going to access the seed starter. I placed the front lip lip down so it's like an L going down and this is going to be my shelf front and the back side of course the one bar is at the back. Now for the stand it's the opposite. The stand has the back face here in the front for the stand and then the back side of it has the lip so it turns that way. Raise the stands and then the shelves all together and as I expected it's shaky and this is why this is an experiment so I think we're gonna have to start cross bracing this this is the reason why I got this so we're looking at this from the back this was the original white cross bracing that I added the 48 inch shelf rod um, before I bought new shelf rods, I just wanted to try if the cross bracing concept is going to work since this is an experiment. So I added these three green uh, garden trellis fence rods and then zip tied them and see how it works. Pretty sturdy, huh? So if you want to have a freestanding seed starter at this setup, you can do this cross bracing concept. Just buy four of these pieces. But I'm actually going to change it all as a wall mount and floor mount um, seed starter because I know I'm not going to move this. These are the two bars for the wire shelving. And then I'm going to drill it in the wall facing this way. So if you're on the, if it's the U channel, the flat side would be up against the wall, screwed to the studs. And then I'm going to zip the actual um, wire shelving stand, seat stand, to the brace. Putting this last brace at the very middle 
And the reason why is I noticed the back side needs some support. So as you can see, this would be perfect. And see how sturdy that is. If you want to keep it this way, of course, you can just add the light fixtures that you need. But we're taking this further. We're making an insulated version. But again, you can stop here. You can start to draw your 48 inch long grow lights and then all your components like your fans can be mounted on the sides. What I love about this is the frame has so much metal or grills that you can just mount anywhere. So you can literally come in here and mount to the grills. Perfectly fits smaller size seat setups. So typically you would get a heat mat that's about 10 inch by 20 inches, 21 inches, and two heat mats perfectly fit here. The regular 10 by 10 seed trays, these are my burpee seed trays, they also go perfectly in there. So if you want to continue insulating the seed starter and you want to continue with the experiment with me, the next step is to insulate this. And I'm using the Reflectix staple tab insulation it's uh, 16 inches by 25 foot so it's a long roll about 16 inches tall i'm gonna try to lay it out using blue tape for now use the tape to temporarily hold things together and zip tight back to the frame what i realized later on is i had to readjust the horizontal shelvings to be 16 inches apart so there is no gap as the roll is 16 inches high so this is the portion I've tucked in, as you can see. This is the piece that I cut, and then I flushed it with this end. There's about, from the back, an overlap, which is good to seal this end. This is the bottom piece. Um, it's gonna be wider than the actual shelf, so this is 16 inches, so you only have a 12-inch shelf. I just realized, while you have this, Make sure you do a mirror template on the remaining roll you have because you want, you'll have one at the bottom right here and then one at the top later. Reflectix, Reflectix tape, foil tape, which basically seals everything. Um, it's used for the insulation, the Reflectix insulation. It will take a lot of time to zip tie and tape all things together. It took me about two hours, so just be patient here. You will also just repeat the same process at the bottom chamber. I'm gonna push that and put zip ties on them. So here we are after four hours of fooling around with the insulation. Looks really good. I actually added an optional upgrade. This is a stair thread where you actually put your foot there and climb up the stairs. It's about a 12 by 48 inch section. I bought from Home Depot. And as you can see, we have the insulation everywhere. I have made intentional holes here on the side. As you can see, the top chamber has a hole. It functions for two things, one to vent out because it gets really hot there with this heat mat and the venting, the hot air goes up and then out these vents on both sides serves as two purposes. Actually three, one is to vent out the heat. It's actually really warm in here. The second is, is a peep hole so I can see my seeds in there and seedlings. And the third is these light fixtures are about 48 inch long and once you pigtail the lights together with the cord it's not going to fit inside so it actually holds a placeholder for these lights so I can secure them at this height and then pigtail would be zip tied into the frame so it actually works very well that's how it works for the top and the bottom shelf you'll notice I have more openness here at the bottom chamber because I really don't need that to be that hot because the seeds have already germinated. I'm just keeping the seedling, seedlings warm. On this side you'll see most of my cords and it goes down to the light switches. Um, the light switches are on a timer but I also have a manual on off there in case I don't need it.
the doors, I've used these two long handles and they are corner bead PVCs for drywalling. So you go to the drywall section, get these, it's about an eight foot long corner bead and then you use them as handles. And again, of course your cabinet magnets are in here. So let's take a look closely at the lights. So here we are, this is the lighting for the top chamber. It's gonna be the same as the bottom chamber. It's three sets of LED lights that are being secured by the end holes, which I zip tie on both ends. You can see on this end, you have the fan. And this is a Barina LED T5 lighting. It's a shop light. You really don't need to have professional grow lights. This should be enough. It has the lumens that we need, which is 2200 lumens. Typically you will want around 2000 to 3000 lumens. Lumens is just a fancy word for the actual light levels that each fixture emits. And it's also a 6500K, which is a super bright white. 6500K or Kelvin refers to the actual temperature of the light. So the higher the Kelvin is, the more it's closer to daylight. So this is 6500. It means it's a very bright white daylight lighting, which is perfect for your plants. So the good thing about these lights are, you know, I don't need to adjust them up and down because they're already very bright. And the next good thing about them is you can fishtail, I heard fishtail or pigtail, which means I'm gonna flash the picture here. They can be interconnected. So there's a series of plugins that interconnect these lights which makes them easy to use. There's also a plug that has a direct switch to the timed power outlet that we have to make sure it works well. Now let's talk about the fan and go to the bottom chamber real quickly. I have two fans. This is the Smart Devil Small Personal USB desk fan. It has three speeds, which is great that I control the amount of air that comes out of it so I can control the amount of movement or amount of air that can go through this entire chamber. I initially had a fan here but it didn't reach that very end uh, as far as the actual gust of the wind because I need that gust especially for these bigger seedlings down at chamber two so it can build the strength when it gets touched by the wind. The stems get stronger as you can see it's shaken vigorously. The thing I like about this is it has three speeds that, and they have separate buttons. So this fan has a button at the back that I can adjust for this chamber. And the top fan has its own control as well. So they plug in separately. The fan that I used to have earlier only has one switch for both fans and I didn't quite like that because sometimes I want air on this chamber and I don't want air at the top chamber. So this is perfect for that. It also has three speeds so you can control the amount of air that you need. And what I like it the most is I can also change the angle. So in case I just need to blow on this, I'm just gonna tilt that and it tilts. So it's the perfect fan for me and both of them plug in down to the bottom power cord. I zip tied it back to the frame at the back poking through the foil, but I do have these two strings and what these two strings do is when I pull it up, it tilts this up. So basically if I, um, I can adjust my fan more so I can also pull it down more and loosen the string at the top. So it just comes back here with this little cord adjuster. You'll see this in backpacks. So this adjust, you know, if I press that, it'll adjust the height of or tension on that string. All the cords on this side go down under the bottom of the second chamber and they tie into a power surge outlet that both has a timer on it and a fixed side which doesn't have a timer on it. I'm going to post all the links to these items in the description below. I plug the lights in for 12 hours in the automatic on and off and everything else is manual. So that is it. That is how I make my indoor seed starter. If you want to follow 
you can use the same materials. You can also use a different material, just follow the same principles, it works. But I'm just giving you an idea. Believe it or not, the sun is about to set. It's really warm right now. It's now 75 degrees. But this morning we were at 31 so that just gives you an idea why you need that anyway that is the episode for today if you would like to follow me make sure you subscribe to this channel and see you on the next episode